So it looks like this epic saga, this story of Elon Musk buying Twitter with all of its twists and turns, it looks like this story might finally be coming to a close. Here's a headline. Musk informs co-investors he plans to close Twitter deal by Friday. And of course, uh, this is making the Twitter employees go insane. Here's an article from a Mashable. Twitter employees aren't pleased with Elon Musk. Yes, they've written a letter uh, with some demands. They have some demands. And I can't help but think that right now may not be the best time <laughs> to be making demands. Because it says here that the uh, Tesla and SpaceX chief told potential investors that he'd fire about 75% of the current Twitter employees should his takeover of the tech company go through. And that was reported by the Washington Post. Now, according to this article here, it says that uh, Twitter staff proved to be unwavering in response to the latest tough talk from the company's perhaps soon-to-be owner, Elon Musk. So, unwavering. Oh, that's very nice. Um, perhaps this should be uh, rewritten, though, as Twitter staff proved to be delusional in a response. That might make more sense. So it says that Time Magazine reported Tuesday that staff at Twitter have penned an open letter protesting that idea, the idea of firing three quarters of them, calling it a reckless threat that could hurt Twitter's ability to serve the public conversation. No, I think that Twitter itself has hurt Twitter's ability to serve the public conversation by banning the most interesting people. So let's take a look at this letter says, staff, Elon Musk, and board of directors, we, the undersigned Twitter workers, believe the public conversation is in jeopardy. Really? I thought it was in jeopardy when they were banning and censoring everything that they didn't like based on politics. But anyway, says Elon Musk's plan to lay off 75% of Twitter workers will hurt Twitter's ability to serve the public conversation. A threat of this magnitude is reckless, undermines our users and customers' trust in our platform, and is a transparent act of worker intimidation. I don't think he's trying to intimidate anybody. I think he's just saying there's a bunch of useless people that we need to get rid of. Like, I, I don't think it's a threat. <laughs> I think it's just what he's going to do. But anyway, let's continue with this idiocy. Uh, we call on Twitter management and Elon Musk to cease these negligent layoff threats. As workers, we deserve concrete commitments so we can continue to preserve the integrity of the platform. We demand of current and future leadership. One, respect. We demand leadership to respect the platform and the workers who maintain it by committing to preserving the current headcount. Yeah, look, uh, when Elon takes over, he is not going to turn it into a workers' collective. And no amount of demands on your part is going to change that. So you can demand respect, but I don't feel like Twitter has earned that respect. Not so far. Let's see, they're also demanding safety. Now the leftist definition of safety is never being exposed to anything they don't like. And of course that only counts for leftists. But anyway, they say, we demand that leadership does not discriminate against workers on the basis of their race, gender, disability, sexual orientation, or political beliefs. So, of course, they have to throw in the race, gender, disability. I mean, this is just what they do. This is second nature to them. This is just the, the air that they breathe. It's constantly obsessing about identity. But how about at the end here? Political beliefs. Uh, I wonder if anybody was discriminated against at uh, Twitter over their political beliefs. I know that the users of Twitter were discriminated against uh, on the basis of uh, their political beliefs. But again, it's uh, rules for thee and not for me. Uh, we also demand safety for workers on visas who will be forced to leave the country they work in if they are laid off. I don't see how this is Elon Musk's or Twitter's responsibility. Again, this is not a social safety net. It's a company. And a company that's not been making any money, by the way. Uh, protection. We demand Elon Musk explicitly commit to preserve our benefits, those both listed in the merger agreement and not. For example, remote work. <laughs> How'd you know that one was going to be in there? 
We demand leadership to establish and ensure fair severance policies for all workers before and after any change in ownership. So in other words, uh, they still want their benefits, both those that they're actually entitled to in a merger agreement and those that they're not. And then finally, dignity, dignity. Uh, We demand transparent, prompt, and thoughtful communication around our working conditions. We demand to be treated with dignity and to not be treated as mere pawns in a game played by billionaires. Mongo only pawn in game of life. So the word dignity, the left has a habit of taking words and then meaning things by that word that the word doesn't actually mean. And I think in this case, it means give us everything we want 100%. And as soon as we get it, we're going to start demanding more. Now, I would think that uh, the Twitter workers are not in a position to demand anything because Twitter is not a profitable company. It's not a good company. And if the workers are at trying to take credit for what it's become, they shouldn't. (laughs) That's a mistake. So, yeah, I think this was a... uh, Perhaps a mistake on their part. I think they've perhaps overestimated their value. But it's it's not surprising. I mean, they've been freaking out ever since the first rumors of Elon Musk buying Twitter came out. And of course, the one thing that's not stated in their letter is that they're terrified that um, people they don't like are going to be on Twitter. And there's not going to be anything they can do about it. Anyway, please subscribe, like, and share. Sharing really helps me out. I thank you for that. I will see you next time.